Welcome back, guys and gals, <laughs> fruitful listeners, to another episode of From the Vine. And we are, again, talking about homeschooling. And we wanted to get a little more personal in this From the Vine as compared to the podcast to let you know what it is that we are specifically doing in our home as far as curriculum goes. Yes. Um to homeschool our children. First question I had was how many days a week do we typically homeschool our children? <laughs> it depends on the week. So it's a, the curriculum we have chosen is a five day a week curriculum, but it easily can be turned to four days, which I do quite frequently. Um, I'll combine a couple days. Um, but it, I mean, it can be whatever you want it to be. That's what's so That's the joy about about it, and that's what we talked about, is that we can customize it as necessary. But yeah, we do obviously try to keep a a routine, if at all possible. Asher would do seven-day-a-week school. He absolutely loves school, so it's it's not a good thing if I try to combine too many days, um, unless we have something to go do on days that we're not doing it, because he just loves it. And it usually makes for a better day for mom, because that was specific attention given to him during that day right not to mention we can combine days easier right now than whenever we potentially are homeschooling four or five kids at the same time or whatever but you can always do it that's what's so nice i've talked to other homeschool parents that have you know all sorts of age ranges high school junior high elementary all in the same household and you can pick out out of every curriculum there's always some fluff and you can take that stuff away and combine it just like you in public school there's a lot of fluff and there's very little in homeschool but you get to choose that exactly that's really good is he good to go He's going, eh, 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 eh. sorry, feeding the baby. Baby's feeding again. Sorry, you guys. <coughs> and he's a very loud feeder. He's loud in general. He um, he makes a lot of eh, 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 noises and he toots a lot. And anyways, you might hear some of that. He wants to be known. Well, he, yeah, he's, his presence is known, believe me. <laughs> you can close your eyes and smell his presence sometimes. Because <laughs> he... He's got a lot of gas. We um, call him our stinky baby. I say you're sweet, sweet, stinky baby. He's so cute. But I'm like, like uh, as a joke, before I came down here, I sprayed some cologne on his on his butt. And uh, I handed him to Jesse. I said, doesn't he smell so good? And she was laughing at me. Anyway, let's move on. So what, what curriculum are we basing our homeschooling off of? So right now. You want to hold yeah. it? Oh, boy. <laughs> Hey, here, show everybody your face. Say hello. <laughs> you watch video, you can see him. Um, You're famous among two people right now. No. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, so right now and for the past, this will be, this is our third year. I've been using My Father's World, which is a Charlotte Mason based curriculum. And it's a faith based curriculum, like we mentioned in the podcast. And I love it because it focuses on the father. It is very Bible-based, especially in those younger years, a lot of our time. They tie in every lesson to scripture there, and and it just, it's really nice because I can tie it into our week when we're not homeschooling. We talk about it all throughout the day, and that's just the curriculum that I chose. I was um, given that curriculum suggestion by a mother of four, almost five. She's pregnant right now. And they have all ages. She has also been a teacher in the public school system. That is what her degree is in. She left um, that shortly after having some children. And she she's tried every curriculum. And this is her absolute favorite. And I love it. And I trusted her opinion on that. So would sure. you say that that is what you like best about this curriculum is that it is Bible based? Um, or is I, there something more specific that you like a lot about this curriculum? Um, I think that the best part is that it's so focused on the Bible, but I, my absolute favorite thing about this curriculum, and this is one of the main reasons she suggested it to me when I had talked to her specifically about my situation, was that I needed something that wasn't going to take a ton of prep work. I, being self-employed, working from home and raising children and homeschooling, I wanted something that wasn't going to take hours out of my week to prepare. Because to be honest, you don't even have to have a curriculum. You can create 
the curriculum, but I don't have time for that. And that's a lot of pressure for me. And it's my- a whole lot easier for us to get this curriculum and then add while, to it, yeah. yeah, add to it and see certain areas where you need to adjust it or something. But just having that baseline is, is really nice. Yeah. So that was this curriculum is literally, it is so, um, the, the instruction, I can I can literally spend less than five to 10 minutes in prep work a day and we get it all done. And that was a big deal to it gives me. Gives you peace of mind knowing also that this is a well thought out mm-hmm. curriculum and you're not really missing any big areas that you should be focusing on. Yeah. You feel like they are getting a, a really well-rounded education and along Christian. with yeah. being Christian yeah. based. So that's my absolute favorite part of this curriculum. Well, that leads to my next question for you. I'm interviewing Jesse today, <laughs> I think. Um, what do you not like about it? Is there anything that you're like, eh, I wish they wouldn't have had that in this? Or have you really not found anything? There's not much that I don't like. Um, I mean, I love I love it all. The thing that I tend to take out if we just don't have the time is there can be some just extra things that there's nothing wrong with them. I feel like if you only had one child and you had more time, you could do all of it. But for instance, right now we've been working on reading with Asher and we'll do three or four reading activities that I find essential that we need to do. And then it'll have like a game to do. And I don't have the time. He loves the game. And if I do have the time, I try to do it at some point. But that, I mean, I don't, I don't want to say that's something I don't like because it's great that it's there. It's an option. It's just something that you don't see always as necessary. As always as necessary. Depending on the time restraints. Yeah. Do you strictly stick to the curriculum or how much do you waver from it or does that depend on what all you have going on that day and how much time you can focus on the yeah curriculum? we um we stick to the curriculum pretty well um i know the first two years that we had the pre-k curriculums for three and four year olds he's in the five-year-old curriculum now even though he is a year ahead i started him early he's he's a very smart child i find that i can stick to it and it's not too much. He's definitely right on target, I feel like, with what they've aligned. And so I don't really want to go much faster. Now, in the beginning, like the three-year-old curriculum, he was well advanced. So I did go at a faster rate at that time. But you have to – that's what we we're kind of talking about. You can sp- sp- you can tailor that to your child because my three-year-old – when Callum's three, I don't know if he's going to be able to – I mean, he might. He's a very intelligent child, but he's just – different when it comes to learning and so it is nice that i can go at a pace that's more comfortable for them yes that's really good can't really get them happy do we have something i can let them do tiny time on all right so something else we wanted to discuss was uh, charlotte mason curriculums Uh, can we recommend any books on the topic of uh, christ-centered homeschooling So Charlotte Mason um, was kind of like a revolutionary figure when it comes to education. And she focused, and that is what My Father's World is a Charlotte Mason-based curriculum. There's many out there. You could check them out. Um, She focuses on the children being treated as people. They're little people, and we should treat them as such. And she also really focuses on reading and nature and learning as a whole. That's why I really love her curriculum is very different than the way the public school teaches our kids. It's not a type of curriculum where you just sit still all day, you sit in front of a book. And I think that's, that's my favorite part about her curriculum is that it's all about the kids learning in a way that they, that God created them to learn and be kids. As far as books, I would recommend reading. I read For the Children's Sake, which is not written by Charlotte Mason, but it has a ton of Charlotte Mason's work in it. Um, It's kind of like a summary of her um, teachings. And it is a very, very good book if you're interested in getting started. Now, I don't want to say it is Christ-centered curriculum. She was a Christian, but it that's not like what she was all about teaching or anything. It was her methods of teaching for children 
but um, I definitely recommend for the children's sake. I also recommend Emma's for Mama. She has a little bit that she talks about in homeschooling. She has a podcast as well. That's Abby Howerstat, and she has children of all ages. She's a mama of Yes, she has a a lot of experience. Yeah, so so I can take good advice from her, and her mother homeschooled. Her mother actually homeschooled um, when it was kind of illegal in Texas to homeschool, and she was kind of in that fight to bring back homeschooling. And so she homeschooled both her kids and she has a lot to say about it. Well, guys and gals, that's all we really wanted to cover in this From the Vine. Yeah. And if you want to see kind of like what a day of homeschooling looks like, it'll be on the YouTube channel. We're planning on doing a vlog. Yeah, we'll be releasing. It may have already be released. At at the time of this release, it may have already be released. Yeah. But there'll be a vlog where it kind of looks like a day in the life of homeschooling children under... Well, we realize again there are there are so many different life circumstances. You guys, the the idea that we are trying to get across is your children are important. They are a gift from God. We are commanded to raise them up in the ways of God, and to we are we should be striving to make disciples for Christ in our children. And the best way we see to do that is to be around them more, and homeschooling allows for that. Like I said, there's many different life circumstances. Um, I'm not going to pretend to – I'm not going to say that homeschooling is for everyone. And I'm not going to say it's easy. There are other options. It's um, not easy. It was. No. De- it, there's definitely days that are difficult, and I think, man, uh, I wish I had that time. Because that I think that that sets a lot of parents back. I know some moms that actually are at home and they still send their kids to public school because that's their break. And it is really hard. I mean, you have moms that stay in age that are at home and they send their kids to daycare. um, Yeah. Just just for a break. So something you have to realize, like she said, this is not an easy thing that we're, we're saying that we do. It is a very sacrificial move on the yes. part of the parents, mm-hmm. especially the part of whoever is primarily teaching them. Jesse does most all of the, the homeschool teaching. I do a lot of the outdoor stuff with the kids, but she does most of the sit down lecturing style teaching. And I try as a spiritual leader of the home to make sure that they are understanding um, scripture and that they are understanding the ways of God. And we, we obviously do that together as well. But yeah, it's certainly more of a burden on the primary teacher. Those are things to take into account. But just because something is hard and considered a burden mm-hmm. does not mean we shouldn't do it. So that's that's kind of the point we wanted to get across here. What are you looking at? Oh, yeah, I was going to say. Um, Stop hitting my mic. That just reminded me <laughs> when he said not to say it's not hard. And I had read this book last year by Abby um, Halberstadt. That's hard is not the same thing as bad. And that's a that that's, was good. Yeah. She I didn't personally read that book, but she was telling me all sorts of. I highly awesome recommend her books. It. She's uh she's she's a wonderful lady, and you can listen to her podcast as well. But she has got a lot of insight. And so for a young mom like me, I try to listen to people with experience in areas that I really. Am new to. Like I said, we were both in public school and never ever thought we would homeschool. So I like to hear other homeschool parents takes on that. So if it is something that you are feeling like God may be calling you to, highly recommend checking out some more experienced people's um, ideas on the matter and what they have to say, their advice. And right. obviously be in prayer and be in conversation with your uh, spouse on this topic because I know that can lead to hard decisions um, for y'all as a family financially. Vodi Bakum actually has a bunch of good lectures on this as well, this topic on reasons you should homeschool your children, mm-hmm. on ways to make sure that homeschooling your children doesn't wreck your marriage, things like that. Mm-hmm. All sorts of good sources out there, but hopefully this source (laughs) helped you in some way or or another. I pray that you guys do prayerfully consider what we've talked about. Don't just brush it off. Again, it may not be for you, but at least least give it some consideration based on the points that we brought up. Yeah, and look into your options. You know, like we really don't have much of an option here. The closest Christian... Private school, if we could afford it, is over 30 minutes away. And that's just, that would be rushing our kids there, rushing them home. It'd be a lot to me like public school, other than I would have the comfort of knowing they are learning Bible. 
Right. Um, and even to us, even in those private schools and Christian schools, they still are very much structured like a public school. We, but there are still... options. I mean, some there. Are, um, this is kind of becoming a new thing that people are trying to embrace, which I hope we can see more of it here in our own hometown, yes. is like small schoolhouses where it's all ages like it kind of used to be, where, you know, like a mom like me might would feel like I have the space to take on a few more kids and teach them. And maybe that's an option for your family if you can or find Or even that. as homeschoolers, it is not necessarily how it used to be because of social media. There are all sorts of communities out there that you can be a part of. Yeah, we where didn't even get into that. Even if we probably should have. Yeah. Even, we have a co-op that we're a part of, and yeah. they have a lot of the social aspects that I was worried about taking care of. So they have park days. You go to the library at certain times that other kids of the same age. Social events like Valentine's Day events and yeah. dances. and um, Yeah, they're having prom. Parties. Yeah all, yeah, all of those things. So you don't have to be completely secluded. Oh, just the other day we went on a field trip. Just yeah, like they school. have nature so field days. trip to the fire station and yeah. things like that. That's awesome. So you can, just because you are homeschooling your children doesn't mean that they are going to be antisocial misfits yeah. in this world. Yeah. Um, you just have to plug into the right communities and there's tons of them, that, tons of them out there. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe we might do a video on that in the yeah. future as well. That's something I didn't think of when I was taking my notes. Sorry. Um, but anyways, I hope this helped you guys. We're going to let you go. God bless you. We will talk to you on the next episode of From the Vine. Bye, guys.